The 2017 Tour de France starts right here in the city of Dusseldorf in Germany with a 14 kilometer time trial. We're going to take a very close look at the course to see just what's in store, see who might be in the running to take the stage win and therefore the first yellow jersey of the race. Take it away Tom. Cinq, quatre, trois, deux, un, allez! Go on mate! Good lad. So the stage is technically a time trial and not a prologue and that's because the prologue needs to be under 8 kilometers long and this one is of course 14 kilometers long. After rolling down the start ramp the riders then take a slight left and they're onto this road which is dead straight, 4 kilometers, not a turn in sight and a total drag strip much like the rest of the course which is also pan flat. Taylor made for, dare I say it, Tony Martin, he's world time trial champion, he's German, he's been world time trial champion three times before the his current title and he likes to push a massive 58 tooth chain ring. That's huge, it's unbelievable. As Tom said, it is almost completely flat. The only gradients in fact are bridges to cross the River Rhine, gaining a total altitude of just 22 metres. Now I did have a look and there is actually a Strava KOM up for grabs on each one, even if the tour itself has no mountains points on offer on this particular stage. From there, the riders head over the bridge, over the River Rhine. It's actually the highest point on the course, 36 metres above sea level, but I doubt it's going to break their rhythm up too much. Once they're over the bridge, they've got a nice little 270 degree corner to deal with. Well, hang on a minute, not so fast, Tom. You can't just gloss over this river. It's helped to make Dusseldorf one of Germany's most important economic centres. And not only that, it's also the capital of fashion here. That's right, it's earned itself the nickname of the Little Paris. And then one last thing before you go, Dusseldorf is actually the sixth highest ranked city in the world for quality of life. Yeah, thanks for that side, but it's safe to say that at this point in the stage, no rider's going to be enjoying themselves that much. We're six kilometres in, just heading back over the bridge and back to the other part of the course. Did you know, Tom, that Dusseldorf is famous for, among other things, its table tennis team, Borussia Dusseldorf? Thanks, Cy. Si. Really great facts there, but back to the cycling. And it's got 300 kilometres of bike paths. Back to the cycling again. As we ride through the old town in Dusseldorf here, we're heading towards the 8 kilometre mark where the riders will get their intermediate time check on today's stage. What about the favourites? I've already mentioned Tony Martin. But other riders who could be up there include Jonathan Castro Viejo of Movistar Team. He's a three-time Spanish national time trial champion. Stefan Kung of BMC. What about Taylor Finney, Candale Draft Pack riding, would you believe it, his first ever Tour de France. And I think we should also mention the Team Sky duo of Vasil Kirienka and Michal Kwiatkowski. In my aero tuck there, I forgot to mention another two favourites. So Primoz Roglic and Jos van Emden of Lotto NL Jumbo have both had really impressive wins in time trials this year. So they're also riders to watch. Tom, good effort, mate. I reckon that's a pretty solid marker for Tour de France riders to aim for, actually. Any idea what your time was? Yeah, I think so. I averaged 25 kilometers an hour. Actually, so. 20, 25 k an hour. Yeah, yeah, 30, 33 minutes, 26 seconds. Okay, well, I presume a fair bit of that was spent on traffic lights, right? Yeah, fair chunk. We'd need to review the footage, but I think a lot of that, yeah. Okay, well, let's round it down. So, 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes sounds fair, and especially when you consider that the fastest time trial in Tour de France history is Rowan Dennis in Utrecht in 2015. The course was very similar to the one here. He averaged 55 kilometers an hour, and that gave him a time of around 15 minutes too. Spot on, I'd say. Okay, well, maybe we'll just have one or two seconds on. Either way, this is a super fast course, isn't it? You've already talked a little bit about the favourites for this stage, but what about the GC favourites? How are they going to get on? Well, I actually don't think that they're going to be too far up the field because there are limited time trial kilometres in this year's Tour de France, which to me means it would make sense for them to have spent more time training their climbing prowess rather than their time trial shots. Yeah, I agree, actually. If we go back to that 2015 time trial in Utrecht, the one that Rowan Dennis bossed, Contador, Froome, Port and Quintana all were grouped fairly close together and they all conceded around about a minute 
to the flying Rowan Dennis. The only thing I could see that might be different this time around is that actually Richie Port has been showing some supreme form in time trials as well as on climbs. And so actually, he's definitely worth a little tip for the stage win as well. Yeah, it could well be, but if an overall favourite doesn't win the stage, all is not lost. Because if you think back to the 1998 Tour of Marco Pantani, in the prologue there, he was 181st out of 189 riders. He still went on to win the race. Yeah, that was a cracking ride, but I'm not entirely sure we're going to see anything quite like that ever again. No, I doubt we'll see it this year. This year, the Tour de France starts on Saturday, the 1st of July, right here in Dusseldorf. We're going to be here all week getting some more great content for you to check out. That's right. So it'd be a great idea, actually, if you don't already, to subscribe to GCN. That way, you're not going to miss any of it. It's very simple. Just click on the globe. Once you've done that, there's a link on screen where you can visit our shop and get some limited edition threads like Sai is modelling right there. If you'd like to check out our Tour de France playlist, which we'll be updating throughout the race, click right there and see one of Sai's favourite ever Tour de France videos, Disc Breaks, the Chorizo Test. Just click there. Yeah, and Tom also will be wearing some uh, GCN merchandise very soon as well, covering up those nipples, which we've all had enough of. I think we can agree. <laughs> I'm sorry.